Another key interview technique used is behaviour-based interviewing. The theory behind this technique is that the best indicator of future behaviour is past behaviour. When an interviewer asks you to describe a situation in which you were involved, they are looking at how you respond using a specific example. Think STAR. The STAR model breaks answers into three segments. 1. Description of a situation or task. 2. The action you took. And 3. The final measurable result. It's very important that all aspects of the STAR format are used. It won't help your case at all if you thoroughly describe the situation, but forget to indicate the result. Likewise, it's no good explaining how well it turned out if you haven't first given a clear picture of the situation and the role you played in solving the problem. Let's look at a star question in action in a panel interview. Alex. Could you please provide us with an example of a difficult situation or problem that you faced and how you went about resolving that problem and what the outcome was? Whenever difficult things come up, mm -hmm. I always manage to get a good end result. That's good to know. Okay, look, can you give us a specific example of a problem you've faced and talk us through how you handled it? Well, whenever we have group assignments to complete at uni, there's always someone who doesn't pick up the slack. And you've always got to make sure that it's all complete, otherwise you don't get a good mark. Ah, <laughs> uh, where was I? Yeah, I always end up with a good result, so that's why people want me in their group. When we look at Alex's body language, he's clearly not engaged. To the panel, this indicates that Alex is not keen to be there and is not enthusiastic about the job. Also, Alex appears overly confident, almost dismissive. It could be that Alex is nervous and that's why he is behaving this way. But unfortunately, the panel can only make a decision based on their own observations. So Alex needs to be more aware of how he's coming across, both in his answers and his non-verbal communication. And don't forget to always switch off your mobile. When we look at how Alex answered the question, he wasn't thinking star. No specific situation task was described. The panel members even prompted to get a bit more specific information, but still, he didn't elaborate. No specific action given. Alex hasn't talked about what he specifically did to solve the problem. Finally, Alex embellished the result by saying that the excellent mark was all due to his own work. Let's look at how the candidate may have responded more appropriately. James, could you please provide us with an example of a difficult situation or problem that you faced and how you went about resolving it and what the outcome was? Well, the first one that comes to mind was a situation at university where I was coordinating a group assignment mm -hmm. um, where we had to run a mock company and hand in all the paperwork and financials for the end of the financial year. So what did you find difficult here? Well, since I was the group coordinator, there was a lot riding on me to um, make it as good as it could possibly be. But there was one person who never showed up to the meetings or contributed to the assignment in any way. So what did you do? Well, the group and I had a meeting to decide how we should go forward with that and it was decided that I would have um, a meeting with the person concerned and see what could be done about it. Uh, I had the meeting and they were at once very apologetic for not coming along but at the same time they explained that they had an awful lot of um, family issues going on at home and I was I was sorry for them but at the same time I had to be conscious that it, it wasn't fair to the rest of the group. I can see that would have been a difficult situation for you. What did you do next? Well, I thought long and hard about it. It was a tricky situation, but I eventually decided to um, have a meeting with that person and the course lecturer. And then what happened? Well, the course lecturer was very understanding. Um, she gave the person an exemption from the assignment um, and said that they could get the marks back at a later date, which allowed us to reallocate all the different bits and pieces in the assignment out to all the other members of the group. Um, and Therefore, we managed to complete everything on time and get everything done. And uh, we did really well for the assignment. We actually got a high distinction. Great. 
So when we look back again to our question, we can see that James was really thinking star this time. He described a specific situation, talked through the different steps he specifically took to resolve it, and then concluded concisely with the end result. He spoke to each panel member in turn and maintained good eye contact with the group. James's presentation is also much more impressive and he has shown leadership and initiative in his decision-making process. From his answer, the panel has a clear picture of how well James works in a group to solve issues as they arise. So, in summary, there are some good lessons to be learned about what does and doesn't come across well in an interview situation. My top three do's and don'ts are do. Do answer all questions using the STAR technique. Do maintain eye contact with all panel members. And do be focused, confident and enthusiastic. Don't. Don't be vague with your responses. Don't be too casual, overly confident or friendly. And don't forget your body language. Be sure to sit up straight, don't fidget and focus on the questions and your answers.